Today I'm going to talk about the T-cell activation. We know that there are many different types of WBCs uh, that are present within our body, but they are not always activated. They are not present uh, within our body in activated form. So before performing their function, they need to be activated first. For this purpose, there are many different mechanisms like in this particular part of the video, in this particular video, I'm going to talk about T-cell activation. And then we can also talk about the activation of some other cells like B cell activation and some other cells like killer T cells or the cytotoxic cells. Now to understand the concept, the complex concept of T cell activation, I have created this story or analogy that can help us to understand this complex concept easily. Now here you can see that I'm using a scenario where there is this theft so I'm using the theft analogy. Suppose here we have this person. He is quite glum. He is quite depressed because quite recently many valuable items were stolen from his house and now he's looking for answers. He's looking for the name of that particular thief that committed this particular crime. Now after a few days, security guard, a security guard came up with this envelope. He is presenting an envelope to this particular person. He is saying that this particular envelope contains the name of the person who committed that theft or who committed that particular crime. So you can see that he is at the receiving end. After receiving that envelope, he has two options. He has multiple options. He can either take that envelope and go to the authorities like police department or any security official of the housing society and uh, then they can take or work against that particular thief. Now in future I will like to compare that particular option with the B cell. We know that B cells are activated with the help of the T cells, more specifically the T helper cells. And after getting activated, this somehow modifies them and produce antibodies. Antibodies also goes by the name of immunoglobins and those immunoglobins then fight against or work against the pathogens. So the other option that this particular person or owner can take is he can take the matter into his own hand. You can see that before getting the name of that thief, he was glum, he was depressed, but now he is furious. He is more agitated. Same goes with the T cells before receiving any particular information about pathogen. They are in inactivated form. They are known as naive T cells at that particular situation. And after getting the information about any particular pathogen, the invading virus bacteria, the cells get activated after a few steps, after a few events and so on. So here you can see that in the second option, this person is taking the matter into his own hands and he is taking another option where he can call upon and take the help of similar persons like him. Here you can see many other persons that are helping this person to fight against that particular thief or to work against that thief. So they are advancing towards that thief, right? Now, how can I fit this whole story or the analogy with this situation of T-cell activation, with the whole process of T-cell activation? So for this, let's look at this picture. Now, this is a macrophage. This is a white blood cell. Like uh, some other white blood cells, this particular cell is an APC, which stands for antigen presenting cell. An antigen is like a protein. Just for the sake of simplicity, let's just assume antigen is a fragment or the portion or part of the invading pathogen. Here you can see that this envelope here, if you can look at this, this envelope is now representing antigen. And I told you that for the sake of simplicity, let's assume antigen is a fragment of any invading pathogen, right? And by looking or by recognizing that particular fragment or antigen, other cells, other body cells, WBCs are able to recognize that particular pathogen, right? So in our case, in the case of immunology, this particular macrophage engulfs the virus and then it breaks it down. And after breaking it down, it takes a piece of that particular 
pathogen. You can see it here, the orange one, and it presents that particular pathogen on a receptor known as MHC. Here you can see this is the MHC major histocompatibility complex. This is the receptor of macrophage. And after it loaded that particular fragment on its MHC2, the next thing is that the T cell comes and recognizes it. The T cells interact with this MHC with the help of its receptor, which is known as T cell receptor. And that particular receptor would recognize it. I will come into the detail of this whole process and the events after that in a moment. But uh, right now I am trying to compare some things here. So this particular macrophage is like the security guard who is trying to present something. And similarly, this T cell can be compared to the owner of the house and he is at the receiving end or this particular T cell is at receiving end. And this structure here, which is the orange structure, it can be compared to the message or envelope, right? And finally, we can see that the receptor, the MHC receptors can be compared with the hand of the security guard and this TCR which is able to recognize that particular antigen can be compared to the hands of this owner of the house. So that was the whole scenario and like the way after receiving the message, this person was agitated or this person was furious. He was more active against the thief now. Quite similarly, after some series of events, this T cell, which is naive T cell, inactivated T cell, it becomes activated T cells. So we can compare that particular activated T cells with these two pictures, right? So now we are finally coming towards the main procedure, the events that happen after the presentation of the antigen. So to get the idea, let's assume that this is a macrophage like before, and it is an APC antigen presenting cell, right? And what happens is this one here is a virus or any pathogen. This macrophage has the ability to eat or engulf that particular virus or pathogen. You can see that this macrophage has many different digestive enzymes within their lysosomes. And that particular lysosome will work against this pathogen and it will break the pathogen into fragments. Like you can see many fragments of that particular virus. Now, one of the fragment is picked and it is loaded on this particular MHC2. It's a complex on which these fragments can be loaded in this manner. And after loading that particular pathogen fragment, now comes the other cell which can come and recognize it. Now, there is this cell T cell which has this receptor TCR and that TCR or the T cell receptor has the ability to interact with the MHC receptor of macrophage. And we know that that particular MHC has the fragment or pathogen. Now this T cell can recognize that antigen or the fragment and then it can activate itself after a few steps. So this was the first interaction between the T cell and macrophage with the help of their respective receptors. Now this kind of interaction can or have to be confirmed by some other receptors or by some other interactions. It's not enough. It's not enough to activate the T cell. This kind of interaction should be confirmed by some other interactions as well. Those interactions fall under the category of co-stimulation, co-stimulatory signals or co-stimulation. Now you can see a few more structures. Blue ones belong to the macrophage and the other belongs to the T cell. Now the top one is B7 and at bottom you can see CD40 if I talk about macrophage. Now B cell has the ability to interact with the receptor of T cell that is CD28. And the bottom one CD40 has the ability to interact with CD40 ligand. L is for ligand. And these are the confirmatory interactions that can confirm union or interaction between the MHC receptor and TCR receptor of macrophage and T cell respectively. But there is also another interaction that is absolutely necessary or required for completing this whole process. That is the CD4 particle that is projecting from the T cell. This CD4 will finally confirm or strengthen the overall interaction between the two cells. And now the cell is ready to 
go into the next phase. So the first phase was the interaction between MHC and TCR. The second phase was, or the second step of activation was co-stimulation. And now comes the third and final step. Here, this step is known as chemical signaling. Now this macrophage will release a chemical by the name of interleukin-12. That will go out, that will approach another receptor, this blue one. This receptor of T cell is known as interleukin receptor or simply ILR. And after interacting, after reaching this receptor, the chemical will trigger this T cell to produce another interleukin. That would be interleukin 2. And then the T cell also has another kind of receptor that is known as interleukin 2 receptor. And the produced interleukin 2 will leave this cell and will ultimately reach this interleukin-2 receptors and that will trigger or stimulate the T-cells or we can also say that this is the step when T-cell would be finally activated. So you can get the idea that we have to notice one thing here that T-cell produced the interleukin-2 itself and it used or processed that interleukin with the help of this IL-2 and after that it was activated. So this kind of activation is known as self-activation or more specifically it is known as autocrine signaling because the cell produced the chemical itself and due to that particular chemical it was activated. This kind of signaling falls under the category of autocrine signaling. And we know that there are some other interleukins as well. Other interleukins were also produced like uh, IL-1. Now this IL-1 is very important in the activation of naive T cells. And we will discuss more about the interleukin-1. This particular interleukin has the ability to convert naive cell to the helper T cell, right? And then at the very last, at the very last, there is also another chemical produced which is interferon gamma, IFN gamma. This IFN gamma will ultimately signal to the macrophage. It's like T cell is saying that I have received your message now. I am activated and I am performing my duty, but now I'm releasing this IFN gamma so that you can call upon more macrophages. You can call upon, you can speed up the process and you can call upon more macrophages and you can repeat this process so that we will be better able to fight against the pathogens. So I hope you got this idea. Thank you for listening.